Greetings everyone, I am Snapjelly and the Dothraki sword or a rock is a realistic. Well, before I can tell you that, I'm first gonna have to explain something about sword designs in history. You see, in our history, both curved swords and straight swords have been around for ever. But why were straight swords so much more popular than curved swords? Well, join me in my quest, and I'll tell you. You see, there are two main reasons why. One is armor, two is shields. You see, chainmail has been estimated, if I remember correctly, to be invented around 400 BC. And it was tough. And way tougher than media wants you to believe. In fact, it was so tough that you could even say it was impossible to get through by any means of medieval weaponry. So what do you do? I mean, you can whack at somebody's chainmail with your curved sword, but it's not gonna hurt him while it might bruise him, but it's not gonna seriously damage him. So what can you do? Well, you could use a battle axe. They're heavy, right? So if you strike somebody on the chainmail with a battle axe, again, the chainmail is not gonna break, but you might break his bones because of the weight. So what did people carry? Shields, simple as that. And what was the easiest thing to carry with a shield? A spear, because that would keep your opponent far away, and that's something that you, of course, want. You don't want to die, so you want to keep your opponent there. And spears were cheap too, so shields and spears were the way to go. Now, if your opponent does get close and you start bashing shields, then you would draw your secondary weapon, which would be your sword, because you need something that's easy to draw and relatively short, because you need to stab around your opponent's shield. I mean, you could use a battle axe or a slicing sword, but you would never be able to pack enough of a punch to actually do any damage. No, you need to stab. So, sh straight swords won. Simple as that. Now, after armor got developed, shields became obsolete and swords became longer. But the primary weapon was still the spear. Well, not the spear, but the pole arm. You see, we invented pole arms because we could now use spears with two hands since we didn't carry shield anymore. So we were able to do various different types of attacks. So you had the halberd, the, the billhook, the bardish, the glaive, all kinds of different types of poles, but they all come down to the same thing, really. Keeping your opponent at a distance, similar to the spear in the beginning. Now, why would you as a secondary weapon carry a sword and not another spear, you might ask? Well, because you can't carry another spear. Where are you going to carry it? You need to hold it in your hand and you're holding your pole arm with two hands. Your sword you could carry in your scabbard on your hip. That's why swords were popular and you needed a relatively long sword and a straight one because you need to thrust. Because you're not going to break his armor, you need to thrust into gaps of his armor. So again, the straight sword won. Now all of this is not important in Essos because nobody wears any armor. If they do wear armor, it's this hard leather type of armor which is a terrible terrible form of armor but I'm gonna have to make another video about that entirely. They don't wear any armor so this allows for other sword designs to develop and become the supreme one, the one that's most common to be used. Now George Double R. Martin wanted the Dothraki sword to look more like a scimitar than anything else apparently but they came up with this design. Now is this a fantasy design? No. Actually, swords like this exist. They have existed for a very, very long time. One of the famous examples is the Egyptian Kopesh. Which is a Bronze Age sword, but it's only etched on the outside of the curve. So then we turn it around and you have the Falx. Which is a curved sword with the edge on the inside. But more than anything, I think it looks like the African Shotel. Now I'm probably butchering that name but it is a really, really curved sword that's double-edged, so it's sharpened on the inside and the outside of the curve. So swords like this existed, but they never really saw the light of day because of armor. Well, in Africa they might have, because they didn't wear armor there, but you get the point. Now the Dothraki sword, is it effective? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it is, actually. In a way, it's gonna be really tip-heavy, that's one. So you could actually use it as a substitute battle axe. It's going to be really tip heavy because, well, it's, it just is. And because of the curve, that's going to amplify your cutting power. So you will be able to pack quite a lot of punch with that and smacking doing a lot of damage. And on the other hand, because of the curve, that allows for so many offensive possibilities that a straight sword does not. Similar to why we developed eventually pull arms with hooks on them. The hooking works. Just imagine your opponent having a defense right here, and your sword just coming around that and still getting him in the neck or on the head. That could be a kill. Simple as that. Or if your opponent would carry a shield, 
you could use your sword to reach around his shield and by drawing like this you could actually move open his defenses, move in and attack. Or you might be able to actually cut his arm around his shield while he's still wearing it. So there you go, it works. In a matter of defense, you might think that it's not that good but it mostly depends on your technique really. I mean it does not have a guard but you don't necessarily need a guard. You could use uh, that, that little hook you have at the, at the beginning of the curve. You could use that to defend holding it like this with the point down or what kind of curved your way and with the same strike as you're blocking you could come around and strike with the tip again. That's the thing that happens in sword fighting, it, it will be really effective. Or you could use the curve to move any incoming strikes out of the way. There you go. Oh, something I forgot is actually when somebody's holding a shield very close to his body, you might be able to reach around and get a vital spot, simply his shoulder, his neck or his side or something like that. So there you go, one strike and you've won. Also with an attack that I saw, I think when Jora fought a Dothraki, I can't remember who it was or when it was, but it was a simple jab to the neck. Now I just said that thrusting is not effective with curved swords, of course it's not, but it's not really a thrust. It is a jab, but not a thrust. You see, again, because of the curve, if you're just holding something against somebody's neck and simply push, that would actually leave a little bit of a cut, and you don't need a deep cut on your neck to be able to cut somebody's throat and kill him. So yeah, jab to the neck very quickly will work too. You can do a lot of things with that hook. You can hook behind his neck, behind his knee. The hooking is very effective because let's say if you miss with a long sword and you draw your sword back, you might be able to cut somebody's arm, right? But if you hook around the arm, it would actually dig into the arm. Like it's not going to go through the bone, but it will simply scrape off all of your skin, your flesh, your muscle, everything. It would, you would just bleed out and even if you survive, you're going to have to amputate the arm because it's going to be useless. You can't use it anymore. They can't fix that. So yeah, the sword is effective. Although in practical terms, it's kind of stretching right now because it's fantasy after all, but I don't think it's really logical that it developed. Simply looking at our history, I mean, it's, it's very unlikely that they don't have any arrows. And if you shoot arrows at Dothraki, they're just going to fall like flies. They have no armor, no shields, no nothing. So yeah, they're, they're going to fall, which would cause them to carry shields. And again, the most logical thing to carry is with a shield is a spear. So even for Dothraki, that would be the case. You see, all of those things that I just said only count for one-on-one -on -one battles with somebody else who also carries a sword. Because against a Dothraki in a one-on-one -on -one battle, I would choose a spear. Even if I don't have a shield, you could... You, people think that if you're fighting a spear, you would only have, have to get around the tip and then you've won. But that's not the case. You can very easily adjust the length of the spear and you can also use it at very, very close combat. And it's really quick to use, so yeah... I, I don't I wouldn't really vote for the Dothraki in, in that case. And another thing is that, like I just said, straight swords are very easy to carry. Swords that aren't curved that much are very easy to carry too. The Iraq is not easy to carry. You can't make a scabbard for it because you won't be able to draw it. And then you're gonna have some sharp thing dangling around your legs. Yeah, you wouldn't want that. And then the camera stopped recording. But I was done anyway, so it doesn't matter. So in conclusion. It's not the most practical thing around, but is it realistic? Yes. Is it effective? Yes. Do I want one? Yes. And am I thankful for you joining my quest? Definitely. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.